Hi, friends. Whoa, sweet, but not as sweet as you. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you're taking care of yourself and I hope that I'm not here to ruin your day. I hope your day gets better because of this video. I need to stop talking. It's that time of year where I put booktubers to the test and see if our tastes line up. Do a little taste test. I selected three booktubers and picked out books from their worst books of 2022 lists. I'm going to read them, share and compare my thoughts and feels and see if we agree or disagree. Before we get to it though, today's video has a sponsor. Today's video is being sponsored by Shelf Savvy. If you don't know anything about Shelf Savvy, let me fill you in. If you love books and cheap books at that, then you're gonna wanna sign up for this free service because that's exactly what they're all about, helping you save money on books. No matter the format from print, physical books, to ebooks, and now their most recent add-on, audiobooks. You can save on books no matter how you like to read. I don't know about y'all, but I personally have a hard time keeping up on book sales, book bargains. So a book I've been wanting to read might go on sale, might go for a cheaper price, or that next book in a series that I don't have yet will go on clearance, and I always miss out the pain, the frustration, the devastation, which is why Shelf Savvy is such an excellent service to be a part of because they notify you anytime a book you've been wanting to get goes on sale. There's one thing about me, I hardly ever want to pay full price for a book. And if I don't have to, I won't. I'm all about them deals. Shelf Savvy does a fantastic job of making sure that all the book sales are kept track of and making sure you don't miss out. Where has this service been my whole life? It's a completely free service and when you sign up, you can personalize all your reading preferences, ensuring you're getting deals that you want to see, and getting bargain recommendations based off the type of books you're interested in. It has a watch list feature, so you can have it set to watch specific books for when they go on sale or when they lower their prices, and it'll notify you when there is a sale happening for that specific book. I don't know about y'all, but I've been trying to be more mindful about buying books in the year of 2023, specifically in terms of how much money I'm spending. And I feel like this service is a smart way to make sure that you are saving money when it comes to book buying. I'm also a big time audiobook boy. So the fact that they're offering audiobook deals now, I'm into it. I'll take it. Give me all the audiobook deals. I'll be sure to leave more information down below in the description on Shelf Savvy. I definitely recommend checking it out, signing up for a free account and start saving on books today. I've done this a few times in the past and I always just really enjoy seeing where I line up. Sometimes it throws me a bit of a plot twist and sometimes I end up next to the booktuber in the hater club. The first booktuber that I picked out is Emmy. I love Emmy's content. She is like the complete opposite of me. She is a chill queen and I am a chaotic peasant. Honestly, I feel like we'd either balance each other out if we ever hung out or she'd literally be so annoyed with me, so... There's that. Then I've got Elias, one of my besties. There's nothing more than I love than consuming things that Elias hates because the things that he hates, I typically end up loving. We are the complete opposite when it comes to our taste in most things. I'm typically bound to find a new favorite if he says he hates something. If you've ever heard us arguing over books, K-pop, manga, anime, you'd get it. Then we've got my king, Jack. Jack introduced me to one of my favorite books last year when I read one of his 2021 favorites. <laughs> The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Thank you, my king. I feel like it's only fair that I try out a book he hated. Those are the three booktubers that I have chosen for my book Hunger Games. <laughs> Not me putting us in an arena over books. Those are the three booktubers I chose for this experiment. That's better. No blood being shed today over books, I promise. I haven't listened to their reviews on any of these books yet because I didn't want their little thoughts to get into the back of my head and influence my experience with these books. But I'll compare my thoughts with theirs after I read them. I'm gonna be starting out with Emmy and the book that I chose from her worst books of 2022 list. <laughs> The Kingdom of Little Wounds. From what I understand, this is a YA historical fiction, and in it we are following a princess and her wedding. A celebration is taking place, but bubbling up underneath the extravagance is a plague. Talk about the worst wedding gift ever. Congrats on your marriage. For the reception, we're going to be having a plague. Till death do us part. Then we're following a seamstress and a nursemaid who find themselves intertwined with the queen, and it leads them to a web of palace intrigue. I've been wanting to get back into historical fiction, which is why I chose this one. This one is supposed to have a bit of, like, a fantastical element incorporated as well, so I'm looking forward to that. I'm hoping for the best here. Going in optimistic, I'll let you know how I feel. Time for reading. Ain't no way this is why A. Let me just lay it all out for you. I understand exactly why this is on Emmy's worst books of 2022 list. In fact, it's most definitely going to be on my worst books of 2023 list, so look forward to that. Had I not been reading this book for this video, it would have been a DNF. Out the window. Out the door. Be gone. And yet here we are. 
I read it. My complaints. First up, the way the women were written about was disturbing. Truth be told, all the descriptions were pretty questionable, but the descriptions were just done in such a distasteful way. I got to a point where I was like, I need to look and see if this author is a man. Even though the name is Susan, if you've seen those memes online about how men write women, that was present here and I was like, a man had to have written this, but nope. Susan, as far as I can tell, identifies as a woman. They shake like milk jellies as she scolds and in a gesture of annoyance, she hoists them even higher. What do you think the author is describing there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just in general, the descriptions kept pulling me out of the story. Like at one point calling a man's part a little bird. Oh, and yes, the courtier carries jewels on his little bird in case you wanted to know that. Because apparently a courtier should carry wealth on his person as a sign of his position. What in the hell? When I say he carries them on his little bird, I mean, they're like, on his little bird like alluded to the fact that it's like stitched on i don't i don't know exactly how that works i, I want to die thinking about it i don't want to think about it the reason i'm shocked that this book is categorized in the ya section is because of the explicit scenes that go down in here some of them involving abuse and rape not to say that ya shouldn't cover those topics in fact i think it's very important to cover topics like that and bring awareness to them but it's how detailed they were in here they're written in very explicit ways painting the image for you showcasing every little dirty detail when in fact the author could have scaled back a bit just kind of alluded to certain things happening, but instead she went very deep with every little detail. Into that I say, put those deets in the ejection seat. Get them out of here. Poof, be gone. My third problem was the length. I'm chucking this baby into the unnecessary long category. As I stated, we didn't need all the gritty deets. Maybe had we pulled back on some of that instead of pulling up on some of that, this book would have been slimmer and better. Do I have anything positive to say? That is the question. I could tell the author put a lot of research into it, and there were little fairy tales at the beginning of each section, and I loved the writing in those bits. Outside of that it was a miss for me. I do not recommend it. Also can we please put this in the adult section? Just because the characters are young does not mean it needs to be YA. Got it? Got it. Now let's compare my thoughts with Emmys. Watch her worst books of 2022 video and here's her rundown on the Kingdom of Little Wounds. First up she says it's the grossest book she's ever read. Which it's up there for me. Sick, nasty, gross. A love triangle between the three. Next she says she liked it but it just wasn't done well. See I'm in the camp where I didn't like it and I also didn't think it was done well. That's where I have placed my tent and I will be roasting my marshmallow over my flames of distaste. Next up, she says it was 400 pages of gruesomeness and was not balanced out with a plot. Spot on with that one, Emmy. Was there even a real reason for the gruesomeness? What's the reason? I need the reason. Finally, she says that it didn't properly analyze the things that it brought up and it focuses too much on shock factor. I'd have to agree. It felt more of like a story that was depicting all these like terrible things that were happening to these characters' bodies, their physical well being. And it was entirely reliant, entirely reliant on the shock factor and how gruesome gruesome it could be. And I'm still waiting for the reason as to why it needed to go as deep as it did with the descriptions. I'm all for concrete imagery, but miss ma'am, I don't need the full details on the boy living on the toilet, or the body being ripped apart, or the man who stitched jewels onto his little bird. Pass! I had a little moment this past weekend and completely redid my bookshelves, and yes, I took off all the covers of the books, so they're just bare. It's not gonna stay like this forever, but I kind of vibe with it. At first I was like, ooh, this is bad. Now I'm like, I'm kind of into it. Next up, I've got Elias. I chose one of the books off his worst books of 2022 list. And the book I chose is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. I feel like I see this book everywhere and I never really see anybody's thoughts. Like I never hear if people love it or hate it. I just see it. It's everywhere. So I don't really know what to expect going into it. This is a young adult thriller and in it we are following our main character, Pip, who for her final project decides to re-examine a case that has been closed. A popular girl who had attended her high school ended up murdered, but the case's end result just never sat right with Pip. We follow her journey in going back into the case and picking up on things that were never showcased before in the original case. I feel like YA thrillers in general tend to get a bad rep, which sometimes it's warranted because they can be cliche AF, but I'm going in here with an open mind and just see what happens, see how I feel, vibe it out. Time for reading. I read it. I also decorated for the occasion. Strings, strings. See you guys, I put in effort. Anyway, I enjoyed this one. I'd give it a solid 3.5 out of 5 stars. The author does a fantastic job of holding on to the tension throughout the story and the pacing. My god. Rev up that engine, pedal to the metal, hold on tight because Buzz Lightyear's about to blast off. Give me that Jimmy Neutron got a blast. That basically sums up the pacing in this book. The way the story moves forward is done in such an effortless way and just is so good at holding your attention from beginning to end. Sure, I am singing this book's praises, but like there were a few things that bothered me, a few things that had me scrunching my nose and had me giving it the eyes. You know the eyes. The judgy eyes. They were slipping while I was reading. I feel like why a lot of YA thrillers kind of fall into this like bad rep category is because the characters do things that are just... <sighs> 
<laughs> so messy. They get involved in these super sticky situations that you just know are not very realistic, but it is fiction, so you kind of have to like remove yourself from it a little bit and be like, okay, I accept it for what it is, I accept it for what's happening, but I also recognize the fact that this would never ever pan out in real life. The other thing is that I feel like I'm getting tired of this trope where like the character starts to dig into a case and then suddenly they're receiving these anonymous threats. I've just seen it a lot and I feel like it just doesn't do it for me anymore. Like I just don't feel like it brings anything new to the table. It doesn't bring anything that's really shocking. Outside of that although, I really enjoyed it. It was a thrilling and exciting read and I definitely want to pick up the next books in the series. I can see why Elias wouldn't like this though, like just knowing his taste. Even though sometimes his tastes don't add up, there were elements in here that I could just see him critiquing in a much harsher way than I tend to critique. Let me watch his video and compare my thoughts with his. First up, he just felt like none of it was plausible and that a lot of the things that happened just didn't really add up or didn't make sense as to how she got away with certain things. I definitely agree with this to some degree because there were some things that the characters did where I was just like, what are you doing? Stop doing that! You're making a mess! But of course, every time that I'm over here yelling at the characters, they refuse to listen to me. They never take my suggestions. And maybe it's my tone. Maybe it's because I'm yelling. Maybe it's because I'm being too harsh. But like, I'm smarter than most of you and you need to listen to me, okay? Number two, he just didn't like the characters. I didn't mind the characters, but something that I will say, and I don't know if this is like as a whole with like thrillers in general, or if it's just YA thrillers, but I feel like I never get a strong sense of the characters outside of the case that they're investigating. Like it feels like the case that they get themselves involved in kind of consumes them. And so we don't get to learn much about their personality. Actually, I wouldn't say that's the case with every thriller, but I think it's just a thing that happens a lot, which makes sense because obviously that's like the most important part of the story is like them getting involved with a case or getting involved in some kind of murder mystery situation and figuring it out and then having to deal with everything that comes with that so like I guess it makes sense but sometimes I just would like to know more about the characters. Number three and his final point is that he felt like a lot of the characters were getting away with a lot of things and that things just felt very convenient. Hear me out here, I agree to some degree. <laughs> like the situations she finds herself in, some of the choices that she makes, and the people that she interacts with, and nothing really happens to her. Well, there is one scene, but for the most part, she comes out of all the messes without any issues. It's interesting because I do agree with a lot of his points, but there are also things that I didn't feel as strongly about, or things that I felt like didn't necessarily make it a terrible book, you know? Didn't necessarily make it or have it fall into the like, worst book ever lane for me. Anyway, thanks for hating it, Elias, so that I could read it and like it. <laughs> Finally, the last book that I'm reading comes from Jack and his worst books of 2022 list. The book that I chose from his list is She and Her Cat. This is a collection of short stories about cats and their owners. It's based off the original story and short film by Mikado Shinkai, which I believe is called She and Her Cat's Standing Points. But that name, Mikado Shinkai, might be familiar for his other works like Your Name and Weathering With You, two of my all-time favorite anime films. I'm really looking forward to reading this one, especially knowing that it comes from Mikado Shinkai because I love some of his other works. I also continue being horrible at working in translated fiction into my reading life. That's something that I just consistently want to get better at. I want to read more translated fiction, so that'll be nice to have this opportunity to read a translated work. Let's get into it. Time for reading. I'm super mixed on this one because I enjoyed it for its chill nature, but on a critical level, it was a pretty lackluster book. Here's why I liked it. I felt like there was a lot of parallels between the cats and their owners. Obviously, they're all going through very different things as cats and humans, but I just really enjoyed seeing those kind of parallels, how things that they were going through as humans and as animals in some ways could connect and they could relate to each other. <laughs> I love how it kind of brings up the importance of a pet companion, how you can be going through so much in your life. Relationships can be inconsistent. Life can consistently throw you curveballs and things can just get hard. But for the most part, your pet companion is like the most consistent thing in your life or can be the most consistent thing in your life. And I just found that message to be super wholesome and pure and made me just appreciate having a pet. And there was just something so calming about this book. Like I could see myself reading again when having a burst of anxiety and it'd be the thing to calm me right down, like fully pull me out of that anxiety spiral. It was just a very slice of life calm story. It switches between the humans and cats, which I don't know why I wasn't expecting to like get the cat's perspective, but I found that to be really cool. Now it's not necessarily a book that wowed me and it wasn't like a standout. And I think had it followed just one story, one owner and one cat and sort of fleshed out that one story more, that it might've been a little bit more impactful and would have left more of an impression on me, but I still was able to like recognize this book's intent and I was still satisfied with its end result. I'd give it personally a solid three out of five stars. Now I'm going to watch Jack's video and compare my thoughts with his. First up, he said he went into it with high expectations and those expectations were not met. I've definitely been there before and it's the worst. You go into a book and you're like super excited about it, your expectations are up here, and then you read it and you're just underwhelmed by it. Like that is one of the worst experiences as a reader. You read the blurb, you think it's going to blow you out the water, and then it blows. 
and you're still in the water. Next, he said it was fun, but it got old very quickly. I can definitely understand this perspective. I feel like a lot of people will probably feel similar to that because it can be a bit repetitive. Specifically for me, it was repetitive on the cat side, like the human side. They're all going through different things. They're all experiencing different things, but the cats are all pretty similar. And lastly, he just said it was basic. Honestly, you're not wrong. But I also don't appreciate the call out, Jack. You saying this book is basic is basically calling me basic. But you know what? I accept it. It's fine. <laughs> That's it for the video, friends. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed it. I always love doing these videos because whether I agree with people or not, I still love hearing differing opinions, being able to like look past my own preferences and look past the things that I liked or didn't like and hearing other people's perspectives and seeing where they're coming from. I just enjoy that experience a lot. It's one of my favorite things about reading is how we can all just have such different experiences with books. I'm currently working on reading a few booktubers' favorite books from 2022, so expect that video soon. But let me know all your thoughts on this video down below in the comments. Have you read any of the books that I I mentioned in this video and if so what are your thoughts on them let me know down below in the comments or just let me know one of your worst books of 2022 if you like this video be sure to go and hit that like button if you want to see more bookish content from me be sure to go and hit subscribe or go and hit that bell icon and you'll be notified every time i post new videos as always thank you guys so much for watching i hope your day is bright that tomorrow is brighter keep reading what your heart desires and i will see you soon with a new video bye yo <laughs> Where did I put Evelyn Hugo? Oh, I wanna, wanna, wanna take you to the basics. It's probably in this, on this shelf. I just lose books all the time. Oh my god. Where are you, Evelyn? There you are, babe. Come here. Come here. Ouch. Okay. Almost got a paper cut. It's fine. I wanna, wanna, wanna take you to the basics. Now let's compare my thoughts with Emmys. <laughs> Hit my coffee. We follow. Oh, it just, it just got so dark in here. Creepy. Talking about a thriller and it got dark in here. And it'll end up. If you like this video, be sure to go and hit that link, link button.